All right. So to orient, what we are learning is how an animal body plan is established, like the asymmetry, like body plan meaning where to form the head, where to form the tail and how to make a head and not make a tail there and so on. So that is established in the very early embryonic stage and that is why it is called embryonic patterning. So front back, top bottom, right? So that those two axes is what we are dealing with and we are trying to do this using Drosophila as a model where this is very well established. So first we learnt uh, dorsal ventral that starts in the oocyte itself and then continues into the um, syncytial blastoderm. And then we started with the uh, head to tail axis, anterior posterior in the previous class and that is where we learnt you have a um, set of metonally encoded proteins uh, which act as translation regulator as well as transcriptional controls and they make an anterior to posterior and posterior to anterior gradient. So, you have an anterior center and a posterior center of morphogenetic activities, right? And they in turn control the expression pattern of genes called gap genes. Okay. So, today we are going to start from gap genes and move on. So, these cartoons show you the basic pattern of expression and the body parts whose formation a given pair rule gene for example, in this case is uh, dependent on. Okay. So, this is like the early embryonic stage you have this pattern of expression. So, they are in stripes. Uh, one row of nuclei express, the other one does not and then the next one expresses and so on. And that uh, later corresponds to a, uh, you know adjacent sections of two segments. Okay. So, that what is that we that is called para segment that we are going to learn now in the right after this slide. Then uh, in later uh, people stage you see the expression pattern and in the mutant that corresponding domain will be missing. And similar story for the segment polarity genes where they are expressed in even more discrete uh, regions. These are expressed in only a certain part of a segment like for example, here posterior means only posterior part of each segment that is where a segment polarity gene for example, engrailed is expressed. Okay. And um, so, that in the later stage and then what body part will miss in that mutant. So, now we need to understand a new concept called para segment and segment relationship and why such a thing exists. Okay. So, the visible morphology has segments, but internally when you look at the molecular constellation of the embryo, there is another segment segmented pattern exists and that is the para segments. And why para segments uh, will become clear when we go to the next slide. First let us learn what is para segment. Essentially if you look at it, so these are the segments. So, these three are the head segments, thoracic segments, abdominal segments. Okay. Um, so, those are our visible body parts. Now, each uh, of the para segments actually have part of two adjacent segments like the posterior part of mandibular segment and the anterior of the maxillary segment form one para segment. So, like that you have um, uh, para segment 1, 2, 3 and so on to 14 of them. Okay. So, para segments basically overlap adjacent segments. So, here again to reiterate what are para segments, they are actually pattern of gene expression. So, the a, a gene expression pattern for example, seen in para segment 6 is distinct from 5 and 7 and that comprom, uh, comprises the posterior of T3 and anterior of A1, okay, abdominal first segment and that is how we define posterior uh, para segments. So, what is the consequence of that kind of an expression pattern uh, defining this para segments as distinct from the segments is illustrated in this. 
uh, for example, to coordinate the different segments, you know, the hinges of the segments to make movements happen, if you look at the ganglia, the neurons from them go to two adjacent segments. Uh, for example, in this case, the you know posterior of this segment and the anterior of the next one are innervated by the same to coordinate movement at these hinges. So, that is how the different segments are coordinated and that is why this parasegmental pattern becomes important for the organism to function normally. Okay. So, this we have kind of box item learnt what is segment and para segment and what is the relationship between the two. Now, we will get back to the genes. So, first we are going to look at the gap genes. So, we are continuing from the maternal effect genes. So, remember my maternal effect genes we have seen. So, now these gap genes are zygotic uh, gene products meaning from the zygotic genome now you have transcription translation and so on controlled by the gradient of the maternal products already established. For example, you have bicoid, nanos and as a result you have hunchback, caudal expression patterns. right? So, now they determine uh, the transcriptional activation of uh, these uh, gap genes. So, so, here are some listed here you have giant, hunchback, uh, this is supposed to be pronounced like grope or whatever, but I said grapple. I checked, but I could not get to pronounce it correctly. So, you need to have sort of a deep voice to pronounce the first syllable of this. It means in English crippled. Okay. So, that is the uh, translation for this German word. So, this is a German word. So, NIRPS. So, these four are um, the main uh, gap genes expressed in the segmented part of the body. Remember the extreme ends, Akron and Telson, right. So, there we have seen this Stainless and Huckabee in two gap genes. So, we are not going to worry so, too much about them. Our focus is on the segmented part and there these four are the critical ones. So, their expression pattern is established. For example, if you take the anterior, so then we will make progress towards the posterior. So, what do we have here? Bicoid in very high concentration and also you have hunchback. When these two proteins are there, they activate giant transcription. Okay. And when you have low bicoid, but enough uh, of hunch back, then you do not express giant and instead you turn on crupple. Okay. And in addition giant and hunch back, they suppress the expression of the posterior genes like NIRPS uh, in this region and crupple. So, therefore, crupple and NIRPS are not expressed in the anterior part. All right, and do not worry about this hunchback for now. That's a separate story. So, um, so remember the hunchback maternal mRNA. So hunchback is one thing where we need to clearly understand. It is maternal as well as zygotic. Right now, what we are talking is the zygotic. So maternal hunchback mRNA is not converted into protein in this part because nano suppresses its translation. So, now you are seeing a band here that is because tailless activates here. Okay. And um, so, the here the overlaps are not shown. Uh, for example, if you see this uh, image, the um, in situ image, you can see a uh, hunchback expression crupple overlap here. Okay. The green is crupple. So, they overlap here and these overlaps are also important. So, what it tells you is different parts of the embryo is going to have different combinations and different concentrations of the gap gene products. So, that is the key thing to remember here. Concentration, combination both are going to vary along the anterior to posterior thing. And these have an interesting suppression pattern. They themselves antagonize in this manner like non-adjacent segments. Like for example, hunchback in this segment, giant is adjacent one, but NIRPS is non-adjacent adjacent one. 
So, hunchback suppresses NIRP's expression. Okay. Similarly, giant suppresses Krupp's expression, which is the non-adjacent. So, you see that here shown, you know, hunchback NIRPs, hunchback NIRPs, they have mutually antagonistic relationship. So, this NIRPs for it, hunchback on either side is non-adjacent uh, gap gene. So, adjacent would be Krupp and giant. And similarly, if you take Krupple, giant is non-adjacent. Okay, so here one after that only. So similarly, here NIRPS comes and then giant. So this sort of uh, antagonism ensures that their expression pattern gets stabilized. So initially, it is started by the bicoid hunchback here. And I forgot to tell you in the posterior, the caudal protein that is present in excess that suppresses um, the e expression pattern of uh, the you know crupple I expressed here and that promotes giant expression. So, that is why here you get giant expression. So, the initial caudal was responsible for this giant to come here. So, therefore, giant is actually activated by bicoid in the anterior and caudal in the posterior. So, this is how the gap gene expression gets uh, established in an asymmetric way. And then you see additional arrows and bars there that sort of indicates a, an asymmetry in this uh, way the suppression happens. Like for example, hunchback's effect on the giant is higher towards the anterior part of the giant expressing domain. So, there is an anterior tilt in the expression pattern like for example, giant will be more concentrated here than here and so on. So, there is an anterior tilt in the expression pattern. So, this is how the gap genes are uh, established and once gap gene expression pattern is uh, stabilized as you see here for example, this particular band of nuclei. So, this is blastoderm still ok, syncytium. So, you see tiny dots in this and they are each one is one nuclei. So, this band of nuclei has a certain expression pattern of the gap genes. It has some amount of hunchback and some amount of uh, crepple and that is not the case with the adjacent ones. So, this is only hunchback, this is only crepple and such combinations and concentrations determine what pair rule genes are going to be expressed in a given uh, region of the embryo in terms of the anterior to posterior axis. Okay. So, now we move to the pair rule genes. So, the pair rule genes the main thing is their enhancers. Okay. So, here you need to remember that the, I am trying to give you an idea of how to remember them. Okay. Gap genes remember mutual antagonism among non-adjacent pairs of genes like hunchback means it is going to suppress nerves and so on. And here you need to remember the enhancers. So, their enhancers have modular arrangement. So, each module responsible for expression in a particular uh, domain and they have uh, ability to respond to the different concentration combinations of the gap gene products which are transcription factors they are going to activate here. So, rem remember uh, when we learnt about enhancers we learnt about two important aspects one uh, for each tissue to be turned on you have one domain of the enhancers therefore, enhancers come in multiple modules. Then we saw a particular module may not be activated by one transcription factor, you have combinations of transcription factors binding and activating. So, while the cis element is modular, the trans factors act in combination. So, that is what we learnt. The same is going to work here and that is how for example, if you take uh, this expression pattern of even scaped, it is expressed in a narrow band of nuclei. So, it is expressed in this band, but not here or here and that is because uh, here you are going to have a different concentration and combination of the gap genes compared to here. And among them you have early ones and late ones 
and the early parallel genes uh, ensure that the late parallel genes form this striped pattern of expression expression okay so the primary ones are hairy even skipped and runt and this pattern is actually the even skipped in situ okay so there are totally eight of them that show this pattern and they divide the embryo therefore into that many uh, domains. So, this is focusing on the um, enhancer of uh, even skipped uh, only ok. So, here this is its uh, entire region um, upstream of uh, you know its coding sequence where you see one particular module responsible for stripe 2 and stripe 7. Uh, see the, these are not segments these are simply stripes ok. So, he, this is still a syncytial blastodome. Um, so, then stripe 3 and the coding sequence and then you have enhances after the start of the coding you have the uh, another uh, set of um, modules ok. So, this, these have been experimentally shown. So, if you look at this one if you take the this particular portion and if you take only one of them stripe 1 the enhancer module responsible for stripe 1 and fuse the reporter lag z it expresses only in stripe 1 and not in the other ones ok. So, the other gap genes are there to bind and suppress um, in those regions uh, where when sorry this one activates only there uh, because we do not have the rest. So, it is not mutation this is just taking that and showing that. And then you take this one and put only in the fifth stripe it expresses not in the other ones. Include both you get on 1 and 5. Now, instead of wild type embryo if the this reporter is introduced into uh, gap the giant uh, mutant embryo. So, here giant is one of the gap genes and that is going to negatively regulate this ok. And in its absence, then this boundary stops. So, it continues to express, so it broadens. So, there is not anything to suppress its expression. So, so this is how we know how the stripes are established. So, this is a closer look at the you know the second stripe alone, like we are taking this portion and looking at close. So, these bands in this uh, horizontal bar represent the enhancers where the different uh, proteins bind. Um, so, if you look at the top ones which are the activators bicoid and caudal ok and uh, you have a hunchback as well. And if you look at the bottom so you have the crepple, nerfs, crepple, giant and so on. So, they are the uh, suppressors binding. So, both group uh, they, they like bicoid and caudal are of course, maternal factors, but the others are all gap genes themselves ok. So, the main point uh, to focus is if you take this and look close what you see is the activators wherever they bind they are bordered by the suppressors ok. So, therefore, clearly to bind to this region there is likely to be competition and that is why the concentrations become important. So, if you have a higher concentration of the activator to the suppressor um, ratio then activator is going to win over and activate and if the concentration is the reverse then it is going to be suppressed. So, this is seen at every one of the domains where you have the activators binding. So, that is where you have the competition with the suppressors. So, this is what ensures uh, a very narrow domain of expression. So, that is about parallel genes and some of these uh, parallel genes activate late parallel genes. Remember out of the 8 we talked about see 3 of them are the early ones the primary ones and then the 5 are the uh, activated later and one of them is the Fuji Tarazu ok. So, that is we are seeing here. So, this protein is actually initially produced um, or rather the its transcription is evenly throughout, but then once the early parallel genes come into effect they bind to enhancers in the Fuji Tarazu region and suppress 
its expression pad expression in these stripes uh, generating these stripes of fusi terrazzo expression okay and it corresponds to you know this region the adjacent uh, of t1 t2 and so on and that gives you this defect okay so larger parts of the body missing so basically para segments two adjacent segments uh, part of it will be missing so this wild type and this is the fusi terrazzo mutants means uh, fewer segments okay so the next one is the segment polarity genes so so we are looking at this portion and you look at the segments here and the para segments below okay segment para segment so now let us look at one para segment okay so in this para segment you have um, ftz very highly expressed and then two adjacent regions have very little of that or the other uh, para role gene even skipped and if you look at these genes so these are two um, segment polarity genes so these are expressed in a single row of cells okay so now the blastoderm has progressed uh, like syncytial blastoderm has progressed into cellular blastoderm okay cellularization has happened so now adjacent cells can produce different receptors and ligands and influence each other okay so we are getting into that domain and at, under that condition what happens is the regions that have high ftz or even skipped end up expressing engrailed like for example engrailed is expressed here where ftz is high here its e is high here again e and ftz and uh, another one um, paired okay any one of these three if they are high they are going to activate engrailed and in an adjacent region where you have these genes very low and instead you have odd skipped we didn't get into all the eight right so the other ones are these odd skipped rent or slopey paired if they are high and they are going to repress a uh, engrailed but in turn they express wingless so as a result you have one row of cells in each para segment expressing engrailed and another row like see remember this to this is para segment and this region one row of cells engrailed and another row of cells wingless so here you have ftz less that's why you do not have engrailed and you have wingless and this pattern gets established engrailed wingless engrailed wingless engrailed like that it's expressed and once these gap uh, pair rule genes activate the segment polarity genes in this fashion they themselves stabilize in the following way okay so i'll directly get to the next one and then come back to this okay so this is what happens in the adjacent cells so remember this cell is this one okay and the next uh, rectangle there is this one so this one wingless initially activated by the absence of ftz or even skipped and instead presence of odd skipped and so on that produces wingless which is a secreted signaling molecule and that goes and binds to the adjacent cell which is expressing engrailed and that engrailed expressing cell usually produces frizzled receptor therefore this wingless signal is transduced and that goes and turn on two genes one is engrailed itself so therefore this cell remains engrailed producing cells in addition it also produces hitchcock so remember another signaling molecule we have learned paracrine signaling and hitchcock secreted is binding to the receptor present patched receptor present in the wingless producing cells only wingless producing cells make the paired receptor and only the engrailed producing cells make the frizzled receptor as a result you have the signaling going on ensuring this cell producing wingless and this cell producing only uh, hedgehog 
okay, the signaling molecules I am talking about wingless and a edge cock. And these two are morphogens, so they are going to generate a gradient. So, from this cell if you go this way, you will have a uh, you know a diffusing gradient of uh, wingless. Similarly, this side you will have a uh, Hedgecock gradient. Okay. So, now we can think of a situation like primary, secondary, tertiary fates for the cells. This may be primary, this may be secondary and this may be tertiary and so on. So, that is possible to happen and that exactly is what happens um, that is shown here. If you look at the top surface of this embryo and if you take the segment abdominal segment 3 and look closely, you find the ones that are producing high amount of the either of the two, they have this sort of uh, hair structure formed on the dorsal epithelium. And where you have no wingless, but you have less of hedgecock, they form a smooth surface. And the next one tertiary feed, they make this thick um, you know hair like projections. And then the other ones, this quaternary feed, they make the fine hairs. Okay. And again you go to the wingless region, then you have this and this and then it goes on repeating. So, this now you have a morphologically visible from patterning of molecules to asymmetry in the morphology you start to see. Okay. So, this is how the segment polarity happens. So, now we are going to get to the most fascinating of all genes. Okay. If the gap genes and pair rule genes were not fascinating enough. So, these are called homeotic genes. So, their effect on the body plan actually shows the dramatic effect starting from all you know little earlier than arthropods. So, their effect on nematodes is not so much. So, th this is why you need to know some evolutionary time scale also. So, you need to understand the, the earliest organisms having the body plan like our body plan. So, our body plan do not think is very different from Drosophila. Okay. So, you, you should not think that uh, uh, I have legs and hands and they do not have. Okay. But if you look at their mouth, their anus and the rest of the body, it is pretty much the same, right. See, so in top you have head or the front you have the head and then your chest next and that is what Drosophila also has. So, so this part tube like body pattern that you see, it keeps switching. So, this pattern started with nematodes, that is what people think. Uh, but there could be organisms earlier than that, but people think nematodes is where this happened early on the tube like structure or uh, you know anterior to posterior. And uh, in those, they are about 700 to 500 million years ago. So, they are very recent compared to the overall life history, okay. The overall life history we are talking about 3.9 billion years or 3900 million since we are I am coming to 700 million. So, it is easier to relate um, in the same thing 3900 to 700. So, the multicellular organisms are here for only a short time. Okay, the terrestrial existence is about for 500 million years and in those very early organisms are do they do have the this homeotic genes that we are going to learn, uh, they do have those genes, but their effect on body plan is not as much as what you see in insects, arthropods and onwards all the way up to us. So, now what are these genes? Um, so, this uh, middle bar shows you uh, chromosome 3, a part of it of Drosophila. In that you have two groups of genes, one called the antenna pedia complex, okay. Uh, the name will become very clear uh, when we get to next slide. Uh, that has four genes, labial, uh, deformed, antenna pedia and sex chrome reduced and this uh, another one which is not marked here. And then another complex, bithorax complex. Bithorax complex has this ultra bithorax, abdominal A, abdomen B. Okay. 
So, these genes are called homeotic genes. They are turned on by the interaction between the gap genes and the pair rule genes. They are different concentrations in different regions end up activating these genes. And the fascinating thing about these genes, if you look at the color code here. So, this is to the left end of the left part of the chromosome, it is not the end, it is one segment and this is the right. So, the left to right arrangement of these genes correspond to the anterior posterior domain of expression and the anterior to posterior structure formation. Okay. The leftmost gene is required for the anterior most body part and the posterior most gene sorry the rightmost gene is responsible for the posterior most body part formation. So, there is a collinearity between the location on the chromosome and the body structure. So, why is that collinearity and why is that conserved has not had been fully understood, but that is how the gene structure is. Okay. So, this is almost like the arrangement uh, brings it down to the way we would design a machine, right. So, each part corresponding to um, you know each instruction for one part in, in a certain order. And now, what happens if these genes are not expressed? Okay, so, first let us look at their expression pattern itself. So, homeotic proteins contain a domain called homeodomain. So, that is a certain set of amino acids, 60 amino acids that are conserved among the various homeotic uh, genes and um, they bind to DNA. These are transcription factors. Okay, so, this 180 base pairs of the coding sequence is what we call as a homeo box. Okay. So, they are called homeo primarily coming from the original definition of homeotic mutants meaning similar structure like a particular structure that should be formed in one place instead the same structure forms elsewhere. Okay, like for example, in, in the place where antenna should form, you make a leg and that leg looks similar to the leg and therefore, homeo, the word is similar structure. That is how initially they named homeotic mutants and then therefore, underlying genes are called homeotic genes and the proteins are homeoproteins. They are also called Hox genes, H O X, Hox in short for homeo, homeotic genes. So, here you see the expression pattern. Um, so, engrailed, engrailed is what group? Segment polarity gene, right. So, then you have antenopedia, the green one expressed only in the thoracic segment. Okay. So, purple here, ultra bithorax, and the red is distal, is distal less. Okay. So, you have this neat expression pattern. So, one information I should have said here itself is, um, oh okay, that comes in the next, I have not missed that. So, you have the two complexes and there is collinearity and this shows you the expression pattern and you see this antenopedia is expressed only here. So, therefore, its function is going to be only there. So, here if you look at it, this labial is required for the head segments. Um, then the thoracic segments, you need these three genes and then antenopedia is required for the second thoracic segment. Okay. And then ultra bithorax is required for the first abdomen segment as well as it is expressed in the uh, posterior of the last thoracic segment. So, remember this. So, and the, we, we are going to focus on the thoracic segment okay, because it makes dramatic structures. So, the first segment makes pair of legs. Okay. Second one also makes pair of legs, but in addition it makes pair of wings as you see here. And the third one, this one makes uh, another pair of legs. So, essentially all three make a, a pair of uh, legs each and 
the concentration of the factors are such that the T2 makes wings but not the adjacent ones. So, here the in T3 the wings do not form primarily because it is ultra bithorax expression converts the wing like structure into uh, haltier. Haltier is short rudimentary wing like structure um, that helps in balancing the flight. So, this is a dipteran in, in insect meaning two winged insect. Many of them are having four wings. Haltier is actually a vestigial sort of wing like uh, very small structure not a full formed wing, but evolutionarily it is a wing like structure that has become vestigial in the dipteran insects. And that is primarily because of the ultra bithorax expression there which does not allow the wing to form there. Okay. So, so, this is the way thoracic segments are forming structures all of them form a pair of legs each. The second one alone forms wings, third one instead of wings form this structure called haltiers, two of them, so it is plural. Okay. So, now what happens if I am going to allow the antenna PDA to express fully here and no um, ultra bithorax here. Now, expression part on wise this will be like second thoracic segment which means a pair of wings and a pair of legs and that is what happens here. Okay, so, this is one example. So, we look at one more. So, now this antenna pedia right in pedia means pod means leg, antenna means the sensing stuff. So, in the place of antenna you make a leg. Okay. That is because this transcription factor suppresses genes required to make the eye and the antenna in addition to promoting leg formation. So, as a result you end up in this place where antenna forms you end up making two nice legs. So, so misexpression of antenna pedia in the head that is what causes this. So, that is homeotic genes. So, since we are exceeding okay I will finish this one slide we have two Okay, these many to complete, but uh, we do not have that much time. I just want to complete this alone uh, because the punchline should not be split into two parts. So, here you go the Hox gene arrangement. So, we are here, okay, the flies. Uh, we saw the collinearity, okay, the head to tail expression pattern and similarly the body part. So, it starts with uh, a common ancestor probably of flies and these polychaetes and goes on tetrapods, we come from tetrapods, okay, four legged animals and uh, these fishes and then the cephalochordates, chordates means anything that makes notochord. So, notochord is the most general structure including us, fish, everything. And if you go all the way to uh, archins, hemichordate, urochordate, all of them have this, okay. So, the most common answers to all of these uh, from where you have uh, nematodes and other organisms, there the impact is not this much. But you see this collinearity of the arrangement of the genes on the chromosome and the body parts has not been altered for about 500 million years. So, so I will stop here in the next uh, class we will complete. Um, how at this stage when homeotic genes are expressed, each part of the embryo has a certain set of transcription factors or at certain concentrations and therefore, each one becomes unique and their fate gets specified. So, we will look at that one and second what the homeotic genes do. So, these are like master regulators. So, those two aspects we will complete in the next class.